So when Apple released watchOS 11, they gave us some things that we've been waiting for for quite some time, like their new training load feature, which allowed us to track our workout trends over time, but they also came out with their new Vitals app. Now, what's interesting about the Vitals app is that it's all about collecting all the important health metrics an Apple Watch already tracks during sleep, all in one place, but it isn't really meant to be a recovery tool either, like let's say Whoop's recovery score. And it also isn't like Fitbit's readiness score, which gives us an indication of how ready we are for the day. And it's also not like Garmin's body battery feature either, which shows how much we've recharged overnight. So then what exactly does the Apple Watch Vitals app do? Well, it's all about tracking nearly all of our most important health metrics while we sleep, like our sleep duration, resting heart rate, breathing rate, as well as skin temperature and or blood oxygen saturation levels if our Apple Watch has those features. And then over time, it can establish a baseline to know if we're within our normal range or if we go out of range on one or more of those metrics. Now, where this differs from all those other features I just mentioned from those other brands is that there's no score or anything like that that we get every morning. It just tells us if we're within range and normal, and if one of those metrics is off, it lets us know that as well, indicating an outlier of one or more of those metrics. The question is, of course, how can we actually utilize that information? Well, it was actually pretty useful for me just recently to figure out that I wasn't just feeling run down from training and needed a rest day. I was actually getting sick. So last week, I had a pretty big block of training with the rides well over two hours long. And then on some days, I also had some weight training and or high intensity interval training later in those days. Now, at the end of the week on Friday, I was definitely feeling those long sessions add up like I usually do after a big block. And I really only had an easy zone two ride planned for that day just to kind of keep the legs loose. I did feel a bit weaker than normal, but I also did just get off a big block of some harder rides. But later that day, I also had a planned weight training session, which I wasn't really all that amped up about, but I still did it as planned, but it definitely felt harder than it probably should have been. Anyhow, the next morning I woke up and I felt like hot garbage and just thought at that point that I just overdid it the day before. And well, I probably did considering how my body actually felt that day. But the Vitals app also had something to say about this, where it showed that my resting heart rate was way higher than normal. However, the rest of my stops were within range. And by the way, I'm using an Apple Watch Ultra 2 in the US, which can track heart rate, respiratory rate, skin temperature, and sleep duration. But since I live in the US, my Apple Watch doesn't track blood oxygen saturation levels. However, if you live in some regions outside the US, you may have SpO2. And what's also kind of interesting to look at is that if we take a look back at my stats for a couple days before that, there was another night where my resting heart rate was out of range. I thought it was actually due to the fact that I was eating some late night cookies. I mean, I had some hard training, so I thought I deserved those cookies. And of course, there's plenty of other factors that could contribute to an abnormal resting heart rate, but in my case, I thought it was just those late night cookies. It wasn't. Anyhow, I did have a ride planned for that day, but instead I listened to my body and decided to take a full rest day. And this, by the way, is I think exactly what the pause rings feature is designed for, where I actually pause my rings for a couple days just in hopes that I could actually get over this. The next day, however, I woke up to get a notification on my watch that the Vitals app had actually now detected two different outliers. Now, if you just have one outlier in a night, the Vitals app will show you that just like the previous day where I had a high resting heart rate, but your Apple Watch won't actually push a notification to you. However, if you have multiple metrics that are off in a night, this is where you'll actually get a notification. And for me, it was when I first woke up indicating that both my resting heart rate as well as my skin temperature were out of range. And of course, there could be multiple factors of why those things are out of range, like let's say illness, too much caffeine, late night meals, menstrual cycles, and or alcohol. Considering I haven't drank in months, I stopped caffeine pretty early in the day, and I was actually pretty good about not eating late night cookies, at least that night before, it was something else. And for how I actually felt that day, well, terrible. And the Vitals app clearly pointed some signs that something was not right, and it wasn't just overtraining. And considering that my wrist temperature was so high, even though I keep my bedroom really cold, that kind of led me to believe that my body was running pretty hot. So I went ahead and took my temperature with a thermometer and that confirmed I had a fever. And then of course, like some of us do, I went ahead and also took a COVID test and well, there you go. So it was certainly helpful in giving me clues into what was maybe going on, but also confirming how I actually felt leading up to getting sick. But I have to say it's also been useful while I've been recovering, being able to see changes in my stats and to see them kind of normalize. Again, I'm 100% listening to my body, of course, but the information from the Vitals app kind of helps back all that up. And then fast forward to today where I'm feeling way better. And here's where all my vitals are back to normal, where my resting heart rate is back within range. My resting heart rate looks good. My wrist temperature is back within range. And then my sleep duration was also good, although probably a little bit shorter than what I would have liked. 
But if we take a look back over the past week, here's where we can see those trends of actually what happened, where a week ago, that was when I had that higher than normal resting heart rate, but then on the weekend, that's where things completely went off the rails. But then we can see that actually kind of gradually get back to within range as it started to recover. My respiratory rate really never got out of range, but there's still some trends to kind of see there for sure. But really probably the biggest telltale sign for me was the wrist temperature. And that was pretty clear on the weekend where I went to take my temperature that confirmed that I was definitely getting a fever. So while the Vitals app isn't like Fitbit's readiness feature, it isn't like Whoop's recovery score, nor is it like Garmin's body battery feature either, there definitely are some clear uses for it. And for me, it helped me figure out that it wasn't just overtraining and helped provide some clues that it was kind of something else. It's definitely not diagnosing anything, of course, but it can provide those helpful insights and clues with those outliers to help you figure out what may be going on, whether that's overtraining, an illness, or hey, maybe even a late night out with maybe a little bit too much fun. But it's obviously still super important to listen to our own bodies, and I could have probably listened to my body a little bit more on that Friday morning where I sort of knew that I wasn't just tired from a long week of training. Now, even though I do think the Vitals app can be useful, I think a lot of us still want Apple to come out with something like a readiness score or recovery score or something like that, which other brands do have, but Apple is historically more on the conservative side of things when it comes to giving us scores. I mean, they don't really even give us a sleep score at the moment. Our Apple Watches actually do collect all that data it would need to have something like that, but it just more lets us know that if everything is normal or not. But I think that kind of brings us to the biggest missing metric from Vitals at this point is that it doesn't include our HRV or heart rate variability. Apple Watches do actually collect this data throughout the night, but it's currently not part of the list of metrics that are tracked within vitals. And why is that? Well, I just have to guess that it has to do with that conservative approach. HRV is a metric that a lot of us are now paying a lot more attention to, but it also can be misinterpreted. However, it is also still a highly individualized metric, and being that vitals is all about tracking our metrics over time and then establishing a baseline, well, this is basically what a lot of other companies do with HRV is give us a baseline range. So it's just kind of another piece of the data that I would really like to see in the Vitals app. The HRV that was being collected on my Garmin I was wearing on my other wrist did also give indications that something was kind of up. So I think that's just something that could be helpful in including here just as another piece of the puzzle without even having to go so far as give us a score. But there actually are some third party apps out there that do provide similar features to Fitbit, Whoop, as well as Garmin. And I'll actually be doing a deep dive into some of those apps in the future videos so make sure to subscribe to the channel to get a notification when those videos come out. But that's my experience with the Vitals app and how it actually helped me when I was sick as well as recovering, but definitely share your experience as well down in the comment section down below. And if you did find the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and hit that like button and then be on the lookout for a lot more videos now that I'm actually feeling good enough to film again that are coming soon. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.